Hello. Uh, my friend Eddie Goff uh, from West Belfast, former postman, uh, has been following my podcasts and he said to me that he thinks this subject here may be a good uh, thing to talk about. Uh, and that is boxers who were never the same after they took a hammer in, in the ring. And uh, I'm going to do a 15 rounder here. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Davy Muir against Roberto Duran. Uh, Davy Muir was a fantastic amateur from New York. And as a rising pro, only 9 10 fights behind him when he went over to South Africa and won the title, WBA title. And got into the fight with Roberto Duran. He was an overwhelming favourite because Roberto Duran was just coming on the back of the, the second Ray Leonard fight, the Nomads, when he quit, when he turned his back on Leonard. And a lot of people turned away from him, thought he was washed up. Subsequently, he had a, a go at the late middleweight title. He was lukewarm against Wilfred Benitez. He was beat by Kirkland Lang who wasn't rated at all in America. And then he had a close fight with Jimmy Batten and people advised him to retire. He came back, same for Bob Arum, and he came back and he beat uh, Pepino Cuevas, Jose Pepino Cuevas. But people went a wee bit overboard about that when Cuevas was washed up. There were two washed up fighters, but Jerome was a fresher. He did look sharp uh, and he did look meaningful. And uh, yeah, that got him a world title fight against Davy Muir but believe me Davy Muir was an absolute overwhelming favourite going into that fight uh, regarding the fight Roberto Duran gave Davy Muir a ferocious beating Davy Muir was on the receiving end of a ferocious beating and I took an awful lot out of him he was pounded from pillar to post but and people don't often talk about this Duran thumbed Muir, I think it was the second or third round, and uh, I don't know whether it was an intentional thumb or not. You know, Duran wasn't really known as a dirty fighter, he was a rough, tenacious fighter with Yanka Tiger's tail in the hope of making a growl, but he didn't deliberately foul. But the thumb was the pivotal point of this fight, I think, because Davy Muir's eyes started to swell badly. His sight was impaired and uh, that had a lot to do with his confidence started to, to wither and uh, Davy Moore was never the same after that fight even though he, he knocked out Wilfred Benitez he was never the same and he tragically died uh, in an accident uh, God rest his soul George Foreman and Muhammad Ali uh, George Foreman had annihilated two guys that had beat Ali, Joe Frazier and Ken Norton. And people weren't so much worried about whether Foreman was going to win or not. They were worried about whether he was going to seriously hurt Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was up to an 8 to 1 underdog. Uh, but Ali pulled off uh, an incredible victory. Uh, psychologically, uh, he messed up uh, George's mind, talking to him throughout the fight. And the rope dope proved to be the right tactics, as George Foreman just beat an Ali uh, and tired himself out. So George found it very, very hard to come back from that fight. And he was out of the ring for quite a while. His last fight was ignominious against Jimmy Young in San Juan, Puerto Rico. He was put down the ninth, I think it was, and lost way Liam points, and he retired. So uh, he was never the same after that fight. But 20 years later, you know, George Foreman came back and won the World Heavyweight title, beating Michael Moore. So unbelievable, just incredible. Barry McGuigan, was Barry McGuigan ever the same after he lost his title in America to Stevie Cruz? I don't think so. 
he was a Lactra fan coming up through the ranks. And there's no doubt that the, the Heat beat him in Las Vegas. And by the way, I was to go on that trip. Barney Eastwood asked me if I wanted to go. And I had just turned pro. And Barney Eastwood had given me a good package, financial package. And the pressure was on me by the time to deliver the goods. So going on that trip early in my career, I thought would have put added pressure on me. Pressure I didn't need. So Paul Hodkinson took the place. But you talk about regrets. Paul, it was a triple hitter. And Tommy Hearns and Roberto Duran were on the bill. And Paul told me that he'd done a bit of sparring with Roberto Duran. Duran was just obviously taking him round. And Roberto Duran gave Paul a, a pair of his boots. That should have been me. Anyway, uh, yes, Barry was never the same. Uh, nearly lost his life. And in some ways it was his greatest performance. Uh, two knockdowns in the 15th and final round cost him the fight. He put on a brave, tenacious fight. But the heat was just too much. I can never understand why they fought at that time of year, at that time of day. A wee bit later on, the sun came down and it was a bit cooler. Anyway, another one, Billy Collins against Lewis Resto. Was Billy Collins ever the same? Well, we'll never really know because he never boxed again and lost his life very shortly after. Lewis Resto's gloves were doctored and there was stuffing taken out of him and Lewis Resto's hand wraps, there was cement on his hand. He was jailed. He'd done a few years in jail and Panama Lewis's coach, who was a real culprit, he was banned from boxing for life. So Billy didn't live long after that defeat. God rest his soul. Was Azar Charles ever the same against Jersey Joe Walcott in their third fight? Charles had previously beat Walcott twice and Charles was the champion. And was beating Jersey Joe and Jersey Joe unleashed an incredible uppercut. Uh, a thing of beauty, really, the boxer. Uh, that knocked Charles Cold. Now, they had a rematch, and a lot of people thought Charles should have got the verdict, which he didn't. But then his decline was very quick. He ended up wrestling and died, I think he was 53 in a car home. But he was never the same after that fight. That fight took so much out of him. The third Jersey Joe Walcott fight where he had not cold. Sugar Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler. Uh, Hagler retired, but Leonard had five more fights after that. He won two, he lost two, and he drew one. Uh, it's not so much was Sugar Ray Leonard ever the same after the Hagler fight. That was a perfect opportunity to retire on top. He had achieved something really, really, really wonderful. Uh, and he'd reached the, the summit, the pinnacle. Why did he need to go on? Ego. And also, Ray Leonard was an alcoholic at the time. A lot of people don't know that. That's, that's a fact now. Uh, it was his ego. But Sugar Ray Leonard... Nye is a wonderful, lovely, humble man. A credit to boxing and a credit to his family and himself. Here's one here. Was this boxer ever the same? Earl Christie against Jose Says from Belgium. This was at Shoreditch Leisure Centre in England. Because I know, because I was there that night. Our fighter, my sparring partner, Rocky Kelly, was fighting Johnny Andrews. And... Earl Christie was unbeaten. He signed the pro contracts live in world of sport. Everybody thought one of the most decorated, if not the de most decorated amateur ever to come out of Great Britain. Everybody thought he was going to go the whole way. And, uh, yep, that night I remember they got in the ring and Earl Christie went through this nonsense of the Union Jack. It was like a military parade. Uh, this went on for 10, 50, the rap with the Union Jack and walking around the ring with the Union Jack and instead of being 
ready for the fight, warmed up for the fight, focused for the fight, which says was, and says caught him early and knocked them out. And Earl Christie was never the same again. Uh, Will Fred Benitez against Davy Moore? Yes, Benitez, uh, great champion. El Radar, they called him, in uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, you couldn't hit him. Couldn't hit him with a bag of rice. If you threw a bag of rice at him. Uh, but he declined. He was the youngest ever champion ever, and that'll never be beat. He was 17 when he beat the the legend Antonio Kid Pamela Cervantes, the Colombian. And he stepped up and beat Carlos Palomino for the welterweight title, which he lost to Ray Leonard. But then he stepped up and he won the late middleweight title, becoming a three-weight champion against Morris Hope. Then he beat Roberto Duran, and, and he was on top of the world. But then he started to, to drop. He had a so-so performance losing his title against Tommy Hearns, and then it really went bad. And it ended up Davy Moore knocked him out in three rounds and he was beat a couple of times more after that, which he shouldn't have been. He should have retired him. He was sick, he was ill. He the punches wouldn't that he once evaded, he was now walking into. Which he would have, you know, avoided by, by millimeters great head movement. He just didn't have it no more. But the people in his camp, and the same of people in Ali's camp against Larry Holmes, they had to take some responsibility too. Jeff Fanick against the Zuma Nelson, the second fight. Uh, this also applies to Rocky Marciano and Georgie Joe Walcott, the second fight. Avanda Holyfield and Dwight Muhammad Kawi, the second fight. And uh, Avanda Holyfield and Mike Tyson, the second fight. Because Jeff Fanick, Georgie Joe Walcott, Dwight Muhammad Kawi, and Mike Tyson gave everything in the first fight. Everything in the lost. In the second fight, a similar vein come out and had a go for the first four or five rounds and they realised they weren't going to knock their opponents out because they didn't do it in the first fight. And they took a dive, I think. Jersey uh, Joe Walcott took a dive. Uh, Jeff Van Jeff Van didn't take a dive, he was just beat into submission. I think Dwight Muhammad Kawi took a dive. One of my favourite fighters, and I don't want to put a slur on him, I think he took a dive. I think he knew in the fourth, fifth round that he just he was in for another long, painful beating. And Mike Tyson uh, bit Holyfield's ear. He wanted out too. And should have uh, been banned from boxing for life instead of being allowed to continue and make millions out of boxing. An absolute disgrace. If it had happened in the street, he'd have been jailed for seven years. So well, there was cardness there. Uh, and I'm sorry that the that, that the slur. These guys were, were, were warriors. But cardness sir, with Tyson. Well, the other ones, just sensible. They just knew that they, they give everything they could. And, and you know, Azuma Nelson wasn't going to fold. Rocky Marciano wasn't going to fold. And Evander Holyfield wasn't going to fold. Uh, so that's my 15 rounder uh, thank you to my friend Eddie Goff I really enjoyed doing this subject and uh, I'll be back soon keep punching